All right, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. We're going to look at the Bible today and God's Word of gaining strength as a believer in these last days. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that we can always come to you. And Lord, we know that no matter what is going on in our personal life or in the world, we can gain strength from you, from your word, from the power of the Holy Spirit that you've given us. Lord, I just ask today as our leadership team hears every Sunday or every week of all the hurts and things people are going through personally, that they would look to your word today to know that we can gain the strength that we need from you in the time that we live in. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as I was <clears throat> preparing for the message about gaining strength, I, I remember about, I don't know, must have been about 10 years ago, I, uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> I injured myself a couple times working out, you know, and, and I just thought, you know what, I, I'm just going to sell, I, I, I got to get rid of all my heavy weights because this, this is ridiculous. I thought, what is wrong with me when I look, go, go to work out now? It's like, I, I, I use baby weights. I, I'm like, what, what happened? When did this happen? And, you know, and then, you know, you, you think back, you know, when you're a, a teenager and all the things you used to do and, and you had the strength to do them, whether, you know, it was late at night, you just get up for school the next day, you know, no big deal. You had this, all the strength. To, I, I remember, you know, I don't know why I'm saying this. But remember, we had bottles of pop, you know, if you can get it, go, really, man, this is terrible, but you date yourself. But the, the, most of the pop came in bottles, you know, when you're like early teens. And, you know, do you remember when if you didn't have an opener, you just pop it off with your, your tooth, you know? I don't know if any of you did that, but you, you did that as an early teen. And... Try and do that in your 40s. You know, you splinter all your teeth, you go to dinner, right? It's like, you wouldn't even dream about doing it. What happened? Your body, our bodies just, they're deteriorating. Here's, the, here's what is a great thing, though, is, is a believer in the time that we live in. Because it's discouraging when we see this news right before our eyes, everything that's going on in the Middle East, all the different things that are happening. It, it, it is discouraging. But God tells us in the New Testament, even though the outward person, okay, even this outward man, this person continues to deteriorate, our flesh, our spirit can get stronger. And that's what I want you to understand today because it's some of the strongest believers that you will ever meet are those that are most frail later on in life. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. It's because what Jesus has done in their life and the wisdom and the Holy Spirit flying off their life and what you can learn from that. Well, well how does this happen? How do we gain strength? Well, let's look from an example where they didn't have strength and where they gained it in Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to look at verse 10 in a minute. But they had forgotten what God's word was, what it meant, and even didn't really remember it at all. And Ezra came to them, the priest, and was able to read it with other priests. And they were so convicted, knowing then at that time, after God had come back, they were in exile. They were able to rebuild the walls of their homeland. And now they were finally there. And he found the word which they had forgotten for years. He began to read and to read and to read to them. And the word so spoke to them, they were convicted and, and they were so downtrodden. And Nehemiah came to them, which we're going to read in a minute, and began to share with them, this is not a time for mourning. We see all the miracles that God has done. This is a time for rejoicing to gain your strength. You know that your strength as a believer, even today, is tied directly to your joy? Why you think about that for a minute? That your strength as a believer is tied 
directly to your joy. Not, of the, not the things of this world, because that, that, that brings us happiness. But, but joy, we know, we rejoice in the Lord always, his word says. Look what Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10 said after Ezra and, and all the Levites began to weep, or I mean the people began to weep when they heard the word of God. Verse 10 in Nehemiah chapter 8. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions of those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you, when you read the word, when, when I do, when all of us do, uh, there should be always, always some type of joy when you read it. When, what does it do? Well, when we look in these last days, when we read the word, it gives us hope. We know we can pull back. We, we, we take a breath. And we pull back of everything that going on, that's going on. And we know, as Christians, that God says that Jesus could come back at any moment. I said this a couple weeks ago. We have the privilege, all of you that are here, including myself, we have the privilege of knowing that we might not ever have to face death. There's such a rejoicing in that. We're reminded by God's word. So I, I challenge you today to, to, as you live this life in these last days, and that you, that you face things that, that we all do, that you get a phone call, and, 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 and you know, when you hit that, got a phone call. <laughs> I got to make that announcement more at the beginning of the messages, I think. It's happened too many times lately. But, but when, you, when you do, it, I, I want you to know it's a natural reaction that, that, that we all hurt for a minute when we hear something, right? You first hear that news. But once you hear what has happened and you realize as a believer who you are, that under, underlying, you're not jumping up and down in it. What that, what that joy is, it's an underlying peace. It's a calm that you know who God is in your life. And he can take any bad circumstance and turn it into joy. God tells us to rejoice always and rejoice. And, and, and when we have that attitude, how, how do we maintain that? With what you're going through right now, how do you maintain the strength that you need in what you're facing? How, how do you maintain strength in these times that we live in that you're getting bombarded from every angle? From what your kids face at school, from what you're dealing with at work, from where you see the world is going on and everything in the Middle East, everything that's happening in the United States, we can't keep up with it. What God is saying to all of us today is, is we don't have to. If we're willing to give it to him, we're reminded by God's word. That's what's so important that you have the Bible and I do. That as we open it up and read it, which we just read, that God is going to do something. He'll do something just the same as he did in our church. The Bible tells us, that those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If we wait, if we're willing to wait, God is going to do something in our life. All of us have experienced it, how that we waited and we waited and we waited. We thought, how, when is something going to happen? And it took 10 years, but all of you see what God has done and how we have this building practically given to us. That's God. Who, why did he do that? He did it for all of you. You're, you're part of this local church family. That's who he did it for. He wants to do the same thing of what you're facing. And I want you to know that, that the strength that you can have in your life, how it's connected to joy. 
as your spiritual life has joy, you have strength. Say that again. If your spiritual life has joy, you have strength. How does that happen in any situation? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You got to read it. Because God is so unique for your life and for mine. If we just take it for a few minutes every day, you know, you're his child. If you have kids, you, you know and you see them. Or if you're married, you know your mate better than anybody else does. And you know what they're facing and you know what they need. Just, just for today, just for right now. We, the same as you do as a parent or as a mate, you know, God does the same thing for us. He speaks to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the way he does is right here. He will give you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He will give you exactly what you need just for that day if you're willing just to spend a few moments with him. Let's look at another verse. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. You know, you know it's, there's a verse in, in, I think it's, it's in Psalms, I think it's Psalm 37 or Psalm 73. It's one or the other. And it says, Do not watch the wicked prosper because it will discourage you because they will only gain those riches or whatever it is for right now. The devil wants you to watch someone else and confuse you. God is not the author of confusion. Do not be weary in well-doing. Here's what you, you, I know all of you have said it at one time or another yourself, and you're weak where you're at right now, and you're, you're trying to figure out so you can gain more strength. And you see somebody else and say, well, man, look at them. They're not, they're not doing right. They're not living right. But everything else, man, there seem to be everything's going great. They're, they're doing, well, first of all, you don't know that. You don't know what's going on in their life. Secondly, God says, don't look at those that are prospering in that way that are wicked. Because it's only for this life. God is saying, do not be weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. There it is. Your joy as a believer comes from your, of your heart on what you believe and what you know. If you truly are convicted and you know who you are as a believer, you will gain strength from that. And your joy will come from who Jesus is in your life. And as you continue to do good, he gives you a promise. God is promising you today, don't be weary. Don't lose your strength because whatever you want to see happen hasn't happened yet. God's saying, I want you to hold on. I want you to know in the promise that you're reading that God wants you to hear today. Because you say, Dallas, I, 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 how long is this going to take? I don't know. I don't know what your season is. I don't know how long God is building what he's building in your life. But I guarantee you, he will come through. If you're willing to have that underlying peace, that's where your joy comes from. Your joy is not like, okay, the Lord's going to do it right now, right now. No, your joy is, you no, know, without a doubt, the Lord's coming through. And you leave it open-ended. You're going to gain strength when you know the promises of God's word and you hold on to them tight. Your joy, watch it start to happen in your life. When you know, without a doubt, that God is going to come through. You don't know when. You don't know how, but you know that he is. There, there's an underlying peace and a joy that people are going to see. They see you in the middle of your circumstance. You're like, man, how are you? How are you, man? Well, I, I, I'm holding on to what God says. And he says, if, if, I, if I do what is right, that, that he's going to bless my life. And all the way along, here's what he's going to do. I was reminded this week from somebody 
But I totally, I, I really want to say that I've forgotten this because the Lord has been so good to me the last 10 years of my life and how that you have been such a part of that, you and my kids, my grandkids. And I had forgotten, and this person reminded me, 11 years ago, I was being evicted out of an apartment that I was living in. I was being evicted. But all the way along that I had lost everything, the Lord was just telling me, Dallas, don't look at your circumstances. I want you just to be faithful to me. That's all he was saying. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know when it was going to happen. And I just know that I needed God to come through. And he did. You've been a part of that. But I want you to know, I'm no different than all of you. As a child of God, if God's saying one thing to you today, be not wearing well-doing. Be faithful. Be faithful, and you will gain the strength in the time that we live in and God will bless your life. And all the way along, that underlying joy, even though you're like, when, when's this going to happen? You're going to have a peace. A peace that passes all understanding that you're going to have that's going to give you strength when it's not quite happened yet. God is going to give you the strength that he's working and that he's coming through. Let's close with this last verse. Jeremiah 33, it's a prayer. Jeremiah 33, 3, some of you know this. Call to me, and I will answer you. Do you, do you know the Lord, when you pray, do, do, do we wait? We're, we're in a hurry all the time, aren't we? If you want an answer that gives you strength, You've you got to wait for the Lord to, to answer. Take a moment. Take five. Take ten minutes. Drive your car after you've prayed and let the Lord... Do, don't let anything get in the way. What's bothering you, what's on the radio or XM or what you've taped to listen to, anything. Nothing. Let the Lord... When you call to Him, when you pray, it says there's a, there's a, there's a promise right there. Call to me and I will answer you. We're a child of God. He wants you to be strong to be able to fight the devil today. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. There, there are powers and principalities that you and I, the devil hates what you do and who you stand for. And God will give you the strength that you need if you call upon him he will answer. What do you need this week to fight whatever battle it is you, you got to fight? Well, we've, we got to pray. God says, call upon me. If the Bible says to pray, we got to pray. We don't pray enough. And, and, you know, we get discouraged and you hear these preachers that pray that, you know, they pray for two hours every morning. And, you know, I'm not saying you have to do that. Just talk to the Lord. Just pray and then wait. Lord, this is what's happening in my life. I don't know how, I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't see. It's been going on for a while. Will you help me? And then just listen. As a believer, you have something unique the world doesn't have. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in your life. And God will come through you through the Holy Spirit, through his word, or through your heart, and give you exactly what you need, the strength that you need to face this week or this day, whatever it is. That's who God is. We finish the rest of it and we'll close. Call to me. To who? To God Almighty, to our Heavenly Father. Call to me and I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You're, you're going through something. And, and in your mind, here's what we all do. We so exhaust ourselves because we're going to figure this out. If we think about it long enough, we're going to figure our way out. 
I'm going to think about it this way and that way. You know, if they're thinking about it at work this way or this, or I, I'm on this, and, and we just exhaust ourselves from it. God says we get strength, we call upon Him, but the way it happens, He's going to show you what you never thought of. That's who the Lord is. That's the Jesus that we serve from the day that we accepted Him as our Savior. That the exciting, the joyful way that you can live what you're going through might be so difficult right now. But when you call upon Him and you listen to Him, the promise is He's going to not show you something. He's going to show you something that is mighty, that is powerful to fight whatever you're fighting in your life. It's going to be so powerful, He's going to knock the devil out of the way. That's who we serve. And all we have to do is call upon him. And he will give you the strength that you need right now for this week. And he will show you something, I guarantee it, that you never thought of. Because he's your heavenly father. And the same as someone that's married or the same as that we have a child that we can see something in their lives that they could never see. And we point it out to them. The same as our Heavenly Father. It's going to show you something you never thought of before. And watch you strength, that strength that comes into your life and the joy that you have watching Jesus come through because He did something in your life that you could have never done on your own. That's who He is, as our Heavenly Father. Let Him give you strength today through His Word the power of the Holy Spirit. Call upon Him. Let Him show you great and mighty things that you do not know and to be strengthened in the day that we live in. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. What is it right now that you're dealing with? Maybe you've been dealing with it for a while and you, you don't, you, you think, how, how long is this going to go on? Don't be weary. Know that God is going to, you actually can be and will be stronger if you open his word up. He will show you great and mighty things. You know, think about your circumstance today. We all have it. We all have something that is a burden on our heart. Give it to him. Call upon him. And he will show you great and mighty things. Powerful things that you need to fight the battle, the good fight that we fight in this world. You are his child. He loves you. Man, it is amazing to know how he can equip us as a believer, as a son or a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus, you see what you've been missing today. And if you're watching and, and you want to accept Christ as your Savior or all the different apps, and if you're not going to listen till later tonight or this week, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, you can pray. Say, Jesus, forgive me. I don't understand everything. I know you died on the cross for all of my sins right now. By my heart, my confession of my mouth, I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all of my sins. And I believe you died on the cross for me. From this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we thank you. Only heaven will tell us someday those that were saved through even watching and listening to these times that we spend together and open your word up. But Father, right now, as we always do, there's someone here that doesn't know you as their Savior. It's been leads us today, this invitation time. May they come forward. I can show them in your word. And I can pray and accept you as their Savior, Lord. We ask it, power of your name, in Jesus' name.